So in this uh, section 1.3, we're going to be talking about linear equations, linear models, uh, that kind of thing. So a lot of this stuff you have seen in algebra. Um, so hopefully most of this will be reviewed. We'll, we'll get into some things you may not have seen um, in a basic algebra class, which is talking about um, more interpretation and application of these things. Um, but I think a lot of this stuff will be familiar. And we will learn something. Um, I like to attach a video uh, for creating a regression model um, that will be separate, um, but we'll also be doing that. So let's talk about slope. So as you probably remember, slope is just, um, we could think of it as rise over run. So how is the Y changing as the X is changing? Of course, with linear functions, the slope is always constant. That's why um, a lot of times we talk about the slope because it's a very, very useful bit of information when it comes to um, talking about linear models. So um, change in Y over change in X is what we mean when we talk about slope. And so one way that we can write a, uh, or I guess we could write the, uh, write the formula. So, slope is um you could kind of a way to remember it rise over run uh but it is also the slope between the point x1 y1 and x2 y2 uh we could write this as the change in the y points y coordinates y2 minus y1 and then divided by the change in the x coordinates which would be x2 minus x1 um now it is important to it's not important in the order, so which point is first and which point is second. That's not important. What is important is that the twos should come first, or if, if this two is first, then this two has to be first. In other words, you could not have y2 minus y1 up here, and then x1 minus x2 have them reversed on the bottom. They need to be in the same order, so these two need to be from the same ordered pair. Likewise, these two need to be from the same ordered pair. Um, so then once we get the slope, we can talk about point slope form. So an equation passing through the point x1, y1 and having a slope m, um, where m, m is the slope, um, we could write this equation as y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And so really what this is, um, we could rearrange this. If we divided both sides of this equation by x minus x1, they would cancel on this. Over here, we'd have y minus y1 over x minus x1 would equal m. Um, and that's basically the slope formula. So really, all we're doing is rearranging this formula, bringing the x2 minus x1 or x minus x1, and just rearranging it. So that's the point slope form. Uh, so-called because we have a point and we have a slope and so then we also have slope intercept which everyone knows this um, so an equation of the line with slope m and y intercept b is of course y equals mx plus b which we all all know this um, and so the way we graph this a lot of times um, is we start we plot the y intercept there and then, uh, in this case, the slope would be negative since we're going down to the right. And so then whatever the slope is, you'd go down one and over however many, whatever the slope is. Or if it's fraction, go down whatever the bottom number is, go over uh, whatever the, sorry, I did that backwards. Go, go down whatever the top number is, go over whatever the bottom number is. Uh, but we'll, we'll see some examples of that. Um, so those are your basic formulas. So... Certainly, you need to make sure that you know these and can work with them, um, especially be between these two, be able to go from one to the other and vice versa. Uh, so let's find an equation. So find the equation of the line through the points, negative 1, 2, and 3, negative 4. Write the equation in slope-intercept form. So let's start by finding the slope. So x1, y1 x2, y2, and again, you could you could switch these. It doesn't matter which is first, which is second. Um, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we get the slope is negative six over four or negative three halves. And then there are a couple of ways you could do this. If it's gonna ask for point slope form, 
um, you could certainly pick one of these points. It doesn't matter which one and subtract off the Y coordinate equals the slope and then subtract the X coordinate, which in this case is going to be adding one. And so there is point slope form. And you can rearrange this into slope intercept form by just getting Y by itself and simplifying the right hand side. Or um, kind of the way I prefer to do these is write your slope intercept form. And um, we know the slope is negative three halves. Now plug in what, one of the points for X and Y. So we'll use this one this time. So the Y is negative four, the slope is negative three halves, X is three. And now solve for B. Uh, so we get negative four equals negative nine halves plus B. And we get the B is one half. And so our slope intercept is Y equals negative three halves X plus one half. And so that's all I wanted to ask for. Um, but going going from this one to this one, uh, I don't I don't think you really would do that. Um, I guess you could, but you kind of need you have to have a point to get there. So you can't just go from this. You'd have to make up a point. So normally, normally, if you find one of these first, you're going to find the point slope first, and then you can go to this one, uh, or you can just plug in a point with the slope, solve for B, and there's your y-intercept. So uh, either way, I don't think either way is, is necessarily that much better. It just kind of depends on which way you prefer, I guess. Uh, so let's sketch the graph of this one. So this one, our slope is negative 3 fourths. And so what that means, uh, we are going, this negative means we're going down. So we're going to go down 3, and we're going to go right Four. So to get every each next point that we want to plot, uh, wherever we start, we're going to go down three and write four. And then the y-intercept, of course, is five. So the y-intercept as an ordered pair would be zero, five. So we can start right there. Now go down three. So one, two, three, go over four, and that would put us there. And then if you're drawing this by hand, uh, you might want to put a couple more. Um, if you're if you're on the computer, you probably just need to put two, and then you can the computer will draw the rest. Uh, so go down three more, go over four more, and, and then we can connect these, and there is our line. So simple enough. Um, there's no domain restrictions, so we assume it goes on infinitely. Um, but that, that's basically it. Start with the y-intercept, use a slope to find another point. Or, I mean, you could plug in any two points. Um, although with fractions, you got to be a little bit careful. So not every point that you plug in will, will be a plot that you could really point, uh, a point that you could really plot. Um, but that's the basic idea there. Okay, so we'll, we'll pick up on the application part on the uh, next one. But that was just kind of the basics.